Okay, I think we should start now. Um, welcome everyone to the Cupid Community Meeting. Um, it's the 1st of November in 2023. My name is Stanley Tiller and I would want everyone who is participating to enter his name into the document, which I'm posting into the chat right now. So first of all, um, a note about the community itself. Um, if you are an active user of the Cupid project, please add your organization to the adopters markdown if your organi organization permits that. Please follow us on Twitter um, and look at our, take a look at our community page. There you, there you will find a lot of information about the project in general. And if you're actively contributing uh, on GitHub to the project, consider joining us um, as a GitHub project member. So call again for new members this week. Does anyone uh, have uh, his participation first time and wants to introduce themselves? Okay, so I guess um, uh, no new members here. Okay, then uh, next point would be um, that we have the release schedule uh, for V1.1 online. Um, first, um, I think RC has been uh, prepared last week, if I remember correctly. Um, if you want, you can uh, check in the upcoming call for papers um, at the Qubit Community Wiki under events. And uh, next topic would then be our agenda and notes. Um, first point is by me. Um, Stu, you brought up the issue that we are currently marking copyright notices in our um, source code files. Um, like, um, I would say it's somehow a mess because people uh, most of the time uh, use their uh, use their company or some some uh, sometimes I've already seen that there is something like copyright the Cupid authors also and the recommendation by uh, the Linux Foundation except itself is to uh, use something like uh, copyright the XYZ authors so I've prepared a PR for that to change that I hopefully found everything where copyright notices are lurking and I would just um, want you to check out the PR and to tell, give us feedback on the PR, what you think about that. Um, uh, currently, from what I've heard, the majority seems to be agreeing with uh, that we should use something like copyright the keyword authors. But yeah, if you have other um, opinions, please chime in here. Not a dissenting opinion, but a question. Is there any way, would it be reasonable to have automation to uh, check if somebody's well-meaning but not paying attention to what's going on and you know goes back and uses something besides you know copyright the uh, presumably Kubert authors would be what we said. Um, is that something we want to bother with? I don't know. I from my perspective, I would say that it might not be worthwhile, that we could spend our time better elsewhere. But yeah, I guess might be wrong on that. So um, I would bounce the question to the other community people. I imagine we could use a simple grep, uh, you know, and then check for something, you know, check for copyright, you know, whatever, and then grep uh, dash V for Qbert and see what else, if, if that list is empty. Yeah. Yeah. You, I mean, if uh, we uh, would set up something like uh, we have that, uh, that community or the, that copyright notice everywhere where it is right now, um, then people would, I, most of the time, what I do, for example, I just copy it, right? So I just take it and, and take it from another file and just copy it. So yeah, because I'm lazy, sorry. <laughs> so um, I think that I'm not sure, but I think, or I guess that that's what most people do. 
So um, if we have that copyright notice inside there, we might uh, we might be good already. But yeah, so I could I could just take this as a as an action item for me probably, um, or at least create an issue on that, and um, so that we uh, could create some automation. I think that's a fair point. Thank you for the initiative. So. Okay, so um, any other opinions on that one? I, the only thing that I I have is that to do something new, it's it's easy, and I think you can. But for the existing ones, I don't know if you don't have legal issues with the the one that owns the copyright at the moment. So you need approval from the from the owner to change it. I mean, you need it formally, even in my opinion. But mm -hmm. if you want to change existing one, if you want to add new files, then that's not a problem. Yeah, you know, I'd say that that since we are the since we are requiring everyone to to um, sign this DCO stuff, so uh, I would think that we would probably um, have the copyright the copyright set already. I'm not sure if it's if it's a problem to change it. So and also I've pinged a couple of people who have their own um, companies, for example, on the PR. So I think that if that. So it's it's I think it's a matter of agreement. I'm just going preparing the PR. If people don't like it, I would say, okay, let's do something else. So that's why I'm asking, right? So um, I just want to make it streamlined and easier for everyone. So the thing is, most of the times that we don't really we, there is a mess in in the copyright uh, stuff because sometimes there are uh, years, sometimes there are different companies inside that and. So I just want my my thinking about this is to make life for everyone easier on that. So, um, but yeah, if people don't agree and want their copyright to um, to stay. I would be happy to just adjust my PR accordingly. So um, I I wouldn't really care to be honest. So uh, Daniel, I think you have a good point about the DCO sign off. Everybody contributing to the code for years and years and years now has uh, has agreed to those terms, and we just need to check what those terms say. And we might have our, we might be actually mismarking each of these files because they were never legally anything but cubeverts. Yeah, that's a good point. So, and besides that, I think we have the Git history, right? And that exactly tells everyone who participated into that file, and that might be. So there is another issue with the copyright, like. If uh, we have, for example, a file that is initiated by Red Hat, for example, so, so it says copyright by Red Hat, but then people from somewhere else, so I guess probably people from in NVIDIA would change it, or people from, from Google would change it, or people from somewhere else would change it. And you could never reflect that as efficiently as the Git history, I would say. So my point is just, Let's let's make life easier for everyone. And since we are already um, requiring people to sign the DCO, uh, we should be good. But yeah, that's a good point. I would probably uh, check the DCO and uh, see what it says. Um, and yeah, make sure that we are not uh, stepping into bad territory. I, I just want to, um, just to be clear, I'm, I'm uh, in favor of doing this, but I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not sure if you can do something like that without uh, without legal advice. That's it. That's what I'm saying. Mm. Yeah, true. Yeah, it's a good point. It's a good point. I would I would check the DCO again and and uh, see whether we are okay. So, um, okay, let's let's. Let's uh, uh, leave it like that, and then uh, then let people chime in on the PR. And I think the only thing is, I guess, that we would need approval from the companies who 
currently have this copyright note, for example, like from people from NVIDIA. So, um, and I saw so IBM some once or something like that. So I think those people should agree on that and then we should be okay. I think it's just a matter of agreement, but yeah, you're right. I'm not a lawyer and I should, I should make sure. So, okay. Um, if there's nothing else to say to this topic, I would go to the next one. Um, there is uh, that is brought up by Andrew, um, who's not here today, unfortunately. But yeah, the, he's talking about the design proposal uh, that there is a proposal to remove rootful VM feature, um, and this proposal is the follow up from the previously discussed mailing list threat. I'm just going to open it directly. So it's also by Orel. Um, yes. So... Go ahead. Sorry. Thank you. So I wasn't here uh, last week on the previous community meeting, but I've heard that you discussed it. And the uh, last time there was a person, I don't remember from which company, that says that he might need Rootful VNs, but he's not sure. So if this person is here today, I would be happy to know what is his answer, if he needs it or not, and whether other community members find this feature useful and want to continue it, or uh, can we deprecate it in uh, version 1.2? I don't see who it was that had uh, mentioned it last week. I know that this week, because it's Daylight Savings Confusion Week, we have kind of low attendance. So it might be something we want to bring up again next week, unfortunately. Yeah, Hi. that's a good point. Hey. I'm Ale from um, NVIDIA. Uh, I, I know in our team, we use the um, rootful VMs feature. Uh, I haven't gotten time from last week to check um, exactly what will break um, if we switch switch to um, non-rootful VMs. Um, I have it on my to-do list. Um, I'll let you guys know um, as soon as I find out. Okay. So I guess the best way to find out um, or, or to let us know would be... Uh either on the community uh, mailing list, I guess, or on the on the PR. So, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, the PR is the PR is on the Cupid community meeting document. So you can just um, find it there. And then we would be happy to uh, to give you get your uh, impression on that. Thanks. Thanks for mentioning that. OK. Um, actually that name doesn't say anything to me. So I guess then you're saying he might not be here, right, Alex? Yeah, he's not here, but you could find him on uh, GitHub. I think he opened mm. issues for us before. Oh, that's a good point. I'm just going to, um, to ping him on the PR probably. Oh yeah, that was, good. yeah. Yep. Oh, he's not a, not a community member yet, right? Yeah. But we can still ping him. He will see it um, if he yeah. has a good Yeah, account. it's just the autocomplete won't work, but I think I will ping him. Yeah, I'm just I'm just going to copy that one. I hope that's written correct spelled correctly. So let's let's just make sure. That's a guy. Uh, that's the handle. You spelled it correctly. I hope it's oh, cool. Yeah. I hope so too. So let's see.
I'll like should I also ping you on that PR so that you know where it is? Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay, I just added that. Thanks. Oh, good. You're welcome. Okay, so um, if there's nothing else to say about the design proposal, then we can switch to the open floor. So now is your time to bring up anything that's on your mind for the project. Just go ahead now. Okay, since uh, there is nothing for the open floor, I switch to the next section that is pull requests that need attention. The first one that Andrew brought up is already LDTM and approved, thanks to Brian and Lugo who did that. The next one is uh, this uh, fixed repeatedly created VM snapshot and VM clone process. That's five days old. Um, let me see if we have already some action going on here. I don't see anything right now. And I think um, the author is not a community member yet. Hey, Daniel, if you want to tag uh, M. Henricks, I'll take a look at it. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Okay, thanks again. So let me see what the next one is. Um, this one is about improve the image upload condition to know if population succeeded. So let's open that one. Wait a second. That's the wrong one. I need to switch somewhere else. No, that's not the wrong one, is it? There it is. No. There it is. Okay, now we have it. Two people assigned, but it looks like... I'll take a look at this one too, Daniel. Okay, okay. Yeah. Thanks again. Okay, which brings us to the end of that one. Then there is the mailing list review. Andrew generously provided already a link to this one. So let me take a quick look. Yeah, Qbit KubeCon North America is about to happen in a couple of days. So I guess that this is just a reminder for everyone who is in the in the area to and able to attend to attend it. And yeah, I think that's already everything said about that then. So finally, we are going to the box scrub. Okay, the first one is already assigned. Um, the second one is a deprecated feature case that are considered as enabled. That's an interesting one. I guess that this is from Aurel, right? Would you want to chime in on this one? Yes. Um, so deprecated feature gates 
have a specific uh, slice that holds them and the production code consider them as always enabled. For example, if we will move the root feature gate to be a deprecated feature gate and we'll put it in this list, then it will enable it. And I think that the expected behavior will be the opposite of what one expects. Because when you enable uh, the root feature gate, then all of the new VMIs will be created as rootful and all my, uh, VMs that were con uh, migrated will be converted to rootfuls even if they were non-root. So it's like the opposite of what you'd expect. And also uh, the production code and the end-to-end -end tests consider feature gates um, differently because as I've said, the production code treats um, deprecated feature gates is always enabled, but the end-to-end -end tests take only what exists on the qubits here. Any thoughts on this um, issue? I think it's a bug. And what do you think the, the expected behavior should be? There is no experience with it because if you, I mean, it depends on the decision. It could be both in this case. Like if it's if it's removed, if the feature gate is removed, there are two options. Either either the feature is now a GA, so it should not be protected by any feature gate, including inside the code. Right? It should not have a condition there. So it should be in theory. It's like default enabled. Uh, and uh, for the case where uh, there is a case that you remove the feature gate and it is because it's the, the feature itself was dropped. It, like, it didn't pass beta or alpha stage and it didn't go to GA, it was just dropped. And in this case, it's also removed, but the, the logical uh, is, is that it is disabled, right? So none of the, you cannot choose a default in this case, in my opinion, because you need to do it per the, per what happened to the feature. Yeah, I, I think that's right. So if the feature moved from alpha to deprecated, then the existing default in alpha is disabled by, by default. So it should be disabled when it goes to deprecated. And if it goes from beta or GA to uh, deprecated, then its existing behavior is um, on by default. So it should be on when it gets deprecated. Uh, I, I think it will depend from where that feature gate has gone into the deprecated state. And um, Edward, I think this is a really good extension of the discussion we were having in SIG API call of the feature evolution cycle. So there are two things going on here is that we use feature gate to evolve the feature from alpha, beta, and GA. Um, so that allows for experimentation. We need to kind of decouple that with actual deprecation and, and removal of the feature. Um, so it might be a much bigger conversation than a simple fix. Jed, uh, you wrote something in the chat. Do you want to chime in? Um, yeah, I mean, pretty much, uh, <laughs> you can just read what I wrote. Um, I, I think the, the fact that we created the root feature gate was a mistake. I, I don't think root should have ever been a feature gate because it's not a feature that we're gating because it's not ready. So that's where we're running into issues now, but I don't think it's a general problem in feature gates. It's just that one. Yeah, this specific feature gate is also used as a global config. Like if you enable it, you also enable root by default for the entire system. So the specific feature gate is really not gating, it's gating and configuring. Right, But uh, for example, for features that were not graduated to GA, if you want to deprecate them, you will 
basically enable them by default. So what do you suggest to do in this case? Yeah, I'm not sure. It's, it's like a case by case thing. No, but if the implementation currently enables it by default because you moved it from one to the other, then that, I think that's the bug. That should not happen. It should be everything explicit. There is no default here. The the only the only we it's regarding the alpha, beta, and j. We only now starting the discussion about the policy. In 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 practice, it almost did not exist. I mean, maybe it was from alpha to j immediately but even when it was when we consider something j we not we didn't even remove the feature gate so it's it depends but i will not say that we should have a, a default we should have a, an explicit the, the the one that removes or the one that the one that removes the feature gate itself that he needs to explicitly say that uh, it is now GA or it is now removed completely and is deprecated. The whole the whole feature is is gone. Hope it's clear. Daniel, you are muted. Oh, thank you. Sorry, sorry for the thanks for the heads up. All right. So, but that that would just mean that we are using or that we are leaving unused code in the code base, right? So the thing would be for a feature that is can can be enabled and is never enabled. So because it's not not um, it hasn't made it somehow, then the code should also be removed. So I'm not sure what that process is, but I think yeah that you folks are right that that there might be a much bigger discussion lurking here. So. Yeah, I don't know how we proceed now. Um, Aurel, do you do you want to take it from here and probably create a mailing thread or something so that we can discuss this in more length? Or do we want to continue the discussion right now? Or what do you think? What should we do? I think we should start the mailing list thread. It is the right uh, way to go, in my opinion. And I also think we need to discuss what should be done to deprecated feature gates after a few versions or after some time has passed because right now we have for example the psa feature gate that does nothing and also the non-root feature gate that in a few hours after my pi will be merged will also do nothing and when can we actually remove it from the code and forget about it I think you should yeah. add it to the, to the, there is a SIG API weekly meeting. I think you should add it to that agenda and discuss it there. That's, that's the best start now. And after you have some agreement on the topic, then you can, I guess you should do it good to summarize it and send an email. And then the thread can be discussed. Otherwise it's like, uh, it will be in my opinion, less effective. It's up to you. Okay, I agree. I will put it in the uh, next week uh, SIG API agenda. Okay, so then I think we have a path forward on that topic. So let's take a look at the next one. So there are this week, uh, no flaky test fixes, as I can see. There's just um, I just take took a quick look at the um, at the uh, PRs that were marked with kind flake. Um, please, by the way, please, um, if you are working on flakes, just uh, feel free to add kind flake to those so that they pop up here so that we can discuss them if you want. Um, there's uh, this uh, PR by Lugo that was merged five days ago where he improved the CPU hard plug test. But if I understand correctly, the work is not completely done. This is an improval. There is some work uh, to do there. But I just wanted to mention it since uh, Lugo spent time on that one. And the other one I wanted to just mention a quick as a quick uh, thing 
<laughs> so currently we have a little problem that that actually um, originated from Lubus PR um, since um, we currently um, have uh, the check test for flex lane that automatically runs uh, changed PR uh, runs changed tests and there uh, an issue was uh, was uh, discovered by this PR uh, because some tests were not running with the number of uh, machines inside Qubit CI that they would have needed or with the number of nodes. And this one fixes that behavior. So if anyone has time, I think it already has an LGTM. Um, I'm just going to drop it into the chat. So I think then um, we would be finished with today's um, Qubit community meeting. So I would probably give another, um, another uh, everyone uh, who wants to speak right now, has final thoughts or something, uh, please go ahead right now. Okay, then, if there are no more thoughts, then I would close the meeting for today. Thanks, everyone, for your attendance. Have a nice rest of your day, wherever you are, and see you in the next community meeting. Thank you. Bye, everyone.